Hey there, it's Jeff from McGoy from Jesus, and uh, today I am going over uh, how to be Christians look at Jordan B. Cooper's look at Exer J. Domini, which uh, was a uh, papal bull, I believe, against Martin Luther. And uh, Jordan Cooper, Dr. Cooper, uh, who I uh, is rapidly becoming one of my favorite Lutherans, is uh, he didn't want to interact with uh, the how to be Christian guy, Ferris. And, uh, but I watched a little bit of this video and I didn't want to react to him anytime soon, but. I just got sucked in. I wish I knew how to quit you. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. And I don't want to feel like I'm picking on this kid. Uh, I shouldn't call him a kid, a uh, young man. I didn't, didn't, but I'm old. I'm getting old. I'm getting up there. Um, and uh, I didn't want to feel like I'm picking on him, but I, <laughs> I have to pick on him. Um, and in this one, he doesn't make so much as many problems as in the past, but he, he just has one big problem, one methodological problem, which we're talking about a historical document from the early 16th century, and he fails to properly do his historical homework the the contextual homework the clues to say okay i think this might mean this or it might mean something else is there anything in that era that could help me determine what this actually means or how people understood it and he just didn't do that homework so that's going to be the main problem I'm going to go over, I don't think all of this, and uh, uh, but I want you to have that in your mind so when I break in and kind of do that historical homework that we can see, and I'm going to link to his video, because I think at some point he tries to provide context from the papal bull, but it's from the same document. And I don't think he's quite getting it. So I might, after we kind of establish his point, I'm, he tends to repeat himself a good bit. So I'm going to skip over, I think. I might skip over. We shall see. And uh, then uh, kind of see where he's trying to be provide context, which is a good instinct. So, if Ferris, if you're watching this, keep that up. But I want to encourage you to do more homework. Um, and he, he tries to do the same things video to video saying, well, it could be it kind of play with language and play with logic, but he is not doing the historical research, uh, necessary. So let's get into this. So Mr. Cooper has a video out called why Rome's argument for magisterial authority fails. He never actually proves that any of Rome's arguments fail, but he does manage to completely misrepresent the teaching of the Catholic Christian Church. Church. So that's what I want to talk about today. And then we have another papal bull, one that's very famous, Exerge Domine, from Pope Leo X, which is a condemnation of Martin Luther, particularly the condemnation of the Ninety Five Theses. What's particularly relevant is the condemnation of Proposition 33, where Luther says that heretics should not be burned alive. And here is a papal bull which says, yes, they should. If you're thinking that doesn't sound right at all, it's because that isn't right at all. Let's it sounds pretty right because I know history and I know that they did kill heretics. They're not the only group. We've kind of moved past that as a society and upon theological reflection. But it sounds very correct because I know what happened in the 16th century. So it only might not sound right because you're trying to make today's infallible church match 400, 500 years ago infallible church. 
Let's go through this piece by piece because there's so much that Cooper gets wrong here. Luther says that heretics should not be burned alive. Okay, so Martin Luther may have actually said that at some point in his life, and depending on the context in which he said it, he may have been correct. Pope Leo X, I guess X is his last name? That's short. But yeah, this pope that is writing this papal bull that Cooper is talking about might have even agreed with Martin Luther on that statement, depending on what the context was. But that's not what the document that Jordan is referring to was discussing. Jordan completely changed the words that are in that document. If you read number 33, it says that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit. Now for context here, in this document, errors made by Martin Luther are being discussed. At one point in the document, it says that some of these errors we have decided to include in the present document. Their substance is as follows. So Martin Luther, this guy here, he had errors. And the document here is saying that the substance of one of those errors was that it taught that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit. But what did Jordan just say? Luther says that heretics should not be burned alive. Heretics should not be burned alive is not the same as that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit. Really? For all practical purposes it is. This is a nonsense argument. Those are two completely different claims. No. Claims. Jordan's claim states a one-size-fits-all rule. He says heretics should not be burned alive. The substance of the error in Luther's claim makes a statement about the will of the spirit. And that statement is that heretics be burned alive is against the will of the spirit. So Martin Luther was talking about the will of the spirit, and Jordan B. Cooper was talking about an unbreakable rule that he just completely made up. We're going to look more... Could, could someone in the comments explain how those two statements are different? I really would like to know. If God, the Holy Spirit doesn't want something, doesn't the statement you should not do that something automatically follow? Is not Jordan Cooper's summary completely correct? Or the differences between those two statements in a minute, but first Jordan goes on to say this. Luther says that heretics should not be burned alive. And here is a papal bull which says, yes, they should. Yeah, the papal bull never says that. This is typical Protestant behavior. They are constantly saying that X says Y, but then when you actually look at X, it doesn't say Y at all. The document is referring specifically to the claim that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit. And the document says we condemn, reprobate, and reject completely each of these theses or errors as either heretical, scandalous, false, offensive to pious ears, or seductive of simple minds. So he's going to argue that it's not a heretical statement or a false statement. I think he wants to say it's seductive of simple minds. We're going to let him go through with this, and before we bring to bear outside sources from the uh, 16th century. And against Catholic truth. They never said what Jordan is saying. They never said that heretics should be burned alive. And to be clear, they also never said that heretics should not be burned alive. Because they weren't discussing the general topic of whether or not heretics should be burned alive. They were discussing a specific claim that Martin Luther made about the will of the spirit. And they weren't even necessarily saying that this claim that Martin Luther made was false. The document tells you that they included some errors in the document. And their substance is as follows. And then there's a list. On that list, number 33 says that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit. And of the items on the list, they said that these are either heretical, scandalous, false, offensive to pious ears, or seductive of simple minds. That doesn't mean it's definitely false. It could be false, or it could be any of these other things. In addition to that, it's also against Catholic truth. That also doesn't mean false. Against can mean hostile to. For instance, there is a certain terrible organization, and they say that a certain terrible act that they perform is only 3% of what they do. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a link in the comments to a video that will explain it to you. I'm not going to go into all the details on that in this video, but that 3% statistic is not technically false, but it is incredibly misleading, and it is against the truth in that it's hostile to the truth. So all of the items in this list are either heretical, scandalous, false, 
offensive to pious ears, or seductive of simple minds. And they are against Catholic truth. Does the document ever tell us which of these charges apply to which of these list items? No. But for some reason Jordan B. Cooper has taken it upon himself to apply this charge to this item. So, Dr. Cooper has said on Twitter in reaction to this video because people were talking to him about this video, but he doesn't want to react to this video, that the historical context is pretty clear on this video. That, and based on the historical context surrounding this, the document, that it is very clear what they were referencing. So he's making the document say something that the document doesn't say, and he's acting as if the document actually says that, and then he's attacking what it doesn't say, but he's saying it says. So that's Protestantism. This list item does not have to be false in order to be on this list. Maybe it's just offensive to pious ears, or seductive of simple mind. Is he ever going to get around to telling us how or which one of these it is? Or what the position of the church is? So, you know, they, um, you notice Roman Catholic apologists will argue that scripture isn't clear, which is why you need a magisterium. And what he is arguing here is it's not really clear which of these items fall under which of these categories here. Is it seductive? Is it false? Is it scandalous? Is it more than one? He won't tell you. So this is just another example of how the Roman Catholic magisterium doesn't really actually clarify uh, scripture or the or tradition, and it just muddies the waters. It doesn't solve what the Catholic apologist wants it to solve. It just gives you more stuff you have to harmonize. Seductive means tending to seduce, and seduce means to lead astray, corrupt, to lead or draw away, as from principles, faith, or allegiance. In other words, list item number 33 could possibly lead simple-minded people astray. Now to be clear, I don't think Jordan here is simple-minded in everything, but I think he just gave us a great example here which proves that the substance of Luther's claim could in fact be seductive of simple minds. Because assuming that Jordan actually read the papal bull that he's talking about here, and then we have another papal bull, one that's very famous, Exerge Domine. Then he would have read that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit. That's what it actually says. But that's clearly not what Jordan understood it to mean, because Jordan said it said this. What's particularly relevant is the condemnation of Proposition 33, where Luther says that heretics should not be burned alive. Jordan was led astray by the claim to think that it meant heretics should not be burned alive. As discussed already, these are not the same thing. Uh, yes they are. Hey, now I see Jordan owns some Star Wars figurines, and I want an excuse to talk about Star Wars anyway, so imagine that I said if you haven't seen any of the Star Wars movies, and you're just going to give it one shot to see if you want to watch all of the Star Wars movies, then I do not think you should watch Episode 1. Can it be said that watching Episode 1 is against the will of Ferris? Yes, technically that's not false, as long as you understand it in the correct context. I'm not saying that you should never watch Episode 1. But I am saying that you should not watch it under certain circumstances. Now I would say that the statement that watching episode 1 is against the will of Ferris is against the truth, and it is seductive of simple minds. But I wouldn't flat out say this is false because depending on the context it could be true. Now does that all mean that watching episode 1 is exactly the will of Ferris? Like I want you to watch episode 1? No. In fact that claim would be false because I have no will pertaining to whether people do or don't watch episode 1. I don't care if you do watch it or you don't watch it. My will had to do with the order in which you watch Star Wars. So that particular claim I would say is false. But back to the other claim, the one I said would be against the truth and is seductive of simple minds. The claim that watching episode 1 is against the will of Ferris. Again, that claim is not technically false, but a simple-minded person could come to the type of conclusion that Jordan B. Cooper came to, and they might claim no one should watch episode 1. I never said that. I have no will pertaining to whether the analogy breaks down because the will of the spirit is about if the Holy Spirit doesn't want something in terms of human interaction, that has a moral imperative that 
him as a mere mortal doesn't have about watching Star Wars movies. And I like the prequels. Whether or not you watch episode one, I do have a will pertaining to the order in which you watch Star Wars under these circumstances. Now this example is not to say that the spirit has no will pertaining to the fate of heretics. Maybe the spirit does, or maybe the spirit doesn't. Are you going to tell us? That would be very helpful. And if he does, maybe it's burning, or maybe it isn't burning. This document that Jordan's talking about doesn't say a thing about what the will of the Spirit is on this issue. It does, however, tell us what God's will is. It says that God does not wish the death of a sinner, but rather that he be converted and live. But we'll get back to that in a minute. The the, can you sense what the problem's going to be here? The, the problem is going to be, he's going to say, Oh, well, the spirit doesn't want the, the, the person to, to be burned alive. He wants them to repent. <laughs> That's not what's in view. What's in view is about uh, someone who doesn't repent. And that's completely what's understood, is that at any time, the heretic should not be burned by the civil authorities. The point is, Jordan B. Cooper is so far away from the actual content of the document, and how did he get so far away? Because the substance of Luther's claim can be seductive of simple minds. So Jordan B. Cooper just proved exactly what Pope Leo X was saying. If Pope Leo's reason for including number 33 was because they found it seductive of simple minds. Again, though, the document never says which of these charges apply to each individual list item. So we're not going to jump to conclusions like Mr. Cooper did. However, we can say it's entirely plausible that the reason why 33 was included on this list was because it is seductive of simple minds and against Catholic truth. Here's the fun part. I could say that the claim that heretics be burned is against the will of the Spirit and the claim that heretics be burned is in line with the will of the Spirit are both against Catholic truth because they are both seductive of simple minds. The Pope today could even write a papal bull that says we condemn, reprobate, and reject completely both of these claims as seductive of simple minds and against Catholic truth. That doesn't mean that both of these... Again, given the clarity of the magisterium, you think he would be able to tell you what the papal bull meant, statements are false, it could simply mean that they're both misleading or seductive of simple minds. This whole situation reminds me of when certain Christians hear an atheist saying, I don't believe in God, and then they just assume that the atheist is saying, I believe there is no God. Saying, I don't believe in God, is not the same as saying, I believe there is no God. For instance, I don't... Yeah, it's the same. I don't believe in aliens. I do believe that there's a possibility for aliens, though. So I don't say I believe that there are no aliens. I just say I don't believe in aliens. Because this is sophistry. Because those are different claims. But this particular claim, especially without all of the context, can be seductive of simple minds. People could misunderstand that and think that I meant I believe that there are no aliens. But again, that's not what I mean. Now again, I want to make it clear that I'm not saying that Jordan B. Cooper is simple-minded. I think that for some reason or another, he made a mistake that was simple-minded. And that's fine, we all make mistakes, even me. I mean, these shorts. I know now that they don't match the button down, but you know, live and learn. Now my hope would be that Jordan B. Cooper corrects his mistake, and he lets his audience know, yes, he did misinform them about what this papal bull said. That would be the Christian thing to do, that would be the honest thing to do, but that's up to Mr. Cooper. It is the official teaching of the Roman Church, under the pontiff, the heir of St. Peter, that heretics should be burned. That's false. That's not the official teaching of the document. If anyone wants to read the document, it's linked below. Also an article from Jimmy Aiken, not related to Mr. Cooper's comments, but someone else had made similar comments in the past. We've got the link to that for you in the description below. But if you read the actual document, it becomes incredibly obvious that Jordan just does not have the facts on his side. The document says, we decree and declare that all the faithful of both sexes must regard the errors as condemned, reprobated, and rejected. We restrain all in the virtue of holy obedience and under the penalty of an automatic major excommunication. Okay, let's look at this more closely. And also, I want to apologize. I uh, accused him of not putting a link in a video in the past, and I think I was wrong on that. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. All right. We decree and declare that all the faithful of both sexes must regard them as condemned, reprobated, and rejected. 
we restrain all in the virtue of holy obedience under the penalty of an automatic major excommunication. Right, but they thought the civil authorities should do the execution. Does that say heretics should be burned? No. It says excommunications on the table, but excommunication does not involve burning. So where the heck is Jordan getting this burn nonsense from? History. Let us, let me drop the hammer now. Let's go to a doctor of the church, the most important figure of the Counter-Reformation, St. Robert Bellarmine, Beller, well, maybe not the most important, Bellarmine, Bellarmine, I guess, I don't know. John Huss, in the recorded Article 14 of the Council of Constance, Session 15, asserted that it's not permitted to hand over an incorrigible one who's not going to repent, okay? Heretic to the secular power, to the secular power, and to allow the penalty of burning. Luther held the same in the Article 33 and its assertion. Okay, so what was Luther's assertion, according to this doctor of the church from the 16th century? Is, was that <clears throat> was that the church was not permitted to hand over an incorrigible heretic, in other words, one that doesn't repent, to the secular power and to allow the penalty of burning. Nor is the error, okay, that they shouldn't be burned, is what he's saying, nor is the error new, for the Donatists also taught the same, like this guy, this guy, this guy. Augustine mentions it. Okay. All Catholics teach the contrary, and even some heretics. For And he goes into how Calvin had um, uh, Michael Servetus, uh, uh, who denied the Trinity, uh, um, uh, handed over to the authorities. Now, I'm not here to pass judgment on people from a radically different background and mindset and their errors and how they dealt with the civil authorities in the 16th century. All right? So I'm not here to pile on the Catholic Church for how they behaved in the 16th century. They took heresy seriously, which, even if they misidentified heresy, even though if they were heretics themselves, that is way, way better an attitude than, say, Pope Francis or post-Vatican II Catholicism. But um, this is this is where I just found this in a quick search, just said, hey, I know about this guy. What did he think about heretics and burning? It, it took me a couple minutes to find this. All Catholics teach the contrary, even some heretics. Excuse me. So he's saying it's in the false character. All Catholics teach the contrary and even some heretics. So he is placing this, that they knew this at the time. Again, he's a doctor of the church in the false category. We then briefly show that incorrigible heretics, and especially recidivists, in other words, repeat offenders, right, can and should be expelled by the church. That's excommunication there, right? And be, and, not or, and, and be punished by the secular powers with temporal punishments and even by death itself. In other words, it is not against the will of the Spirit. The will of the Spirit is not against heretics being burned. First proof is from Scripture. He goes through Scripture. Granted, his exegesis is horrible, but 
that's neither here nor there. Moreover, Christ and his apostles have placed heretics in the same category as wolves. The matter is proved secondly from the sentences and laws of the emperors with the church regularly approved. Huh. Well, this really puts a whole whole new light on Pope Francis's uh, death penalty thing. That's definitely a change, huh? Let alone for heretics, right? Then Theodosius, Valenius, and other religious emperors passed laws against heretics by which, on occasion, they sought to punish by fines of pounds of gold, sometimes by confiscation of all their goods, sometimes by exile and scourging, sometimes by imposing the ultimate penalty. And this is all against Luther and John Huss, who was burned, I believe. A third proof is had in the laws of the church. A fourth proof is in the testimony of the fathers. Jerome, Augustine, uh, St. Leo, St. Gregory, St. Bernard. Finally, there is a proof from reason. Heretics can be justly excommunicated as all omit. Therefore, they may be put together. I guess the maybe is implied. I don't know the underlying Latin. Secondly, experience teaches us is there is no other remedy. Thirdly, forgers in the judgment of all deserve death, but heretics are forgers of the word of God. Hmm. Pope Francis really uh, developed uh, developed the teaching on the death penalty, huh? Fourthly, uh, Augustine. Uh, the reason she should meant to be put out the habits of the soul imitate the temperaments of the body toward the the first reason is lest evil injure the good or the innocent be abused by the injurious. All these reasons are persuasive that heretics should be put to death, for in the first place they injure the neighbor more seriously than any pirate or robber, since they kill souls. So yeah, maybe Dr. Cooper, who studies this much more than you or I, knew what he was saying because he's pretty well versed in church history. Just throwing it out there. So what do we learn here? I'm going to keep going for a little bit. See uh, if there's uh, more to interact with. But what do we learn here? When you get a document that's contested, like Unum Sanctum or Vatican II or, or, or this bowl, you want to go to contemporary sources, not fourth century, five century later sources. This tells you as much as you need to know about the fallibility of oral tradition, where we have a current pope against the death penalty, and we have a doctor of the church arguing for the death penalty, and we have a papal bull arguing for the death penalty, and he can't even understand a papal bull. Then the Catholic apologists want to argue against the, 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 the clarity of Scripture. But anyway, in terms of historical methodology, when you have something in context, you want to look at how it was received. So when I look at Unum Sanctum, for instance, not, not to go on a tangent here, I don't care what 20th century theologians thought or were trying to spin about Unum Sanctum. I want to know what 14th, 15th, 16th century people thought before, you know, before the modern era. And again, if I can get as close as possible to the event, like I can with uh, Robert Bellamine, then I'm going to do that. So should I trust Ferris, who can't tell me what this means, or should I trust an opinion of a, uh, and he's not, I know he's not technically t commenting on the papal bull, 
But it's because of this historical context that Dr. Cooper is not stupid man. He's a very smart man, and I, even though I have my disagreements with him, he knows his church history, and you should come at this with much more humility and do your homework. That's a question for Jordan. Now, if I had to take a guess, I would say that Jordan was probably taught this by a Protestant pastor who was probably taught it by someone else. And He's read so much more church history than you have, sir. More than uh, all of us combined and multiplied and an exponent, uh, it would be my guess. And nobody's actually doing the research to actually see what this document says. Because, folks, you aren't doing the research. The machine says it best. There are not 100 people in the United States who hate the Catholic Church, but there are millions who hate what they wrongly perceive the Catholic Church to be. Protestantism started with this guy. About 500 years ago, Martin Luther hmm, made a mess of things. What we As we're going to see in this Catholic document, Church the church was trying very hard to clean up that mess. The document says, as far as Martin himself is concerned, oh good God, what have we overlooked or not done? What fatherly charity have we omitted that we might call him back from such errors? For after we had cited him, wishing to deal more kindly with him, we... Now this is where I praise Ferris for trying to put in some context, but it ultimately fails. We urged him through various conferences with our legate and through our personal letters to abandon these errors. We have even offered him safe conduct and the money necessary. In other words, they're showing how he's an incorrigible heretic. Necessary for the journey, urging him to come without fear or any misgivings, which perfect charity should cast out, and to talk not secretly but openly and face to face after the example of our Savior and the Apostle Paul. If he had done this, we are certain he would have changed in heart, and he would have recognized his errors. So around 500 years ago, this guy made a bunch of errors. He didn't think they were errors, but an error can be a deviation from accuracy or correctness. And as we saw with Jordan, who saw this, and thought this, it's entirely possible that number 33 on this document was listed as the substance of an error because it was seductive of simple minds. So his errors got passed on to more people. I guess it, you would think it was possible, but you didn't do your homework. And those people actually started making more errors than he had, and they pass it on to their children, and then their children, and then their children, and eventually we get to here. So if somebody along the line from Luther to Cooper had just looked at the actual document and didn't read into it what Cooper is reading into it, then we could have avoided this entire conversation altogether. If people would just do the research... Okay. If people would just do research, you know, like a couple minute internet search. I, I would say Google, but I use DuckDuckGo. Highly recommend it. With your privacy. Uh, the complete and utter lack of awareness here is kind of astonishing. And figure out what the actual Catholic Church teaches, as opposed to what the... The actual Catholic Church at what point in time? 2020? Or 1530? 1540? 1550? The one where... This guy was in the mainstream? Or the one where Pope Francis is in the mainstream? Wrongly perceived Catholic Church teaches? Then I wouldn't even have to make these videos explaining simple reading comprehension to a guy who I know understands simple reading mm. comprehension. Jordan, if you're watching, just please do the research. Read the document. There's nothing in here that even comes close to making it sound like they were. He is beclowning himself. If you have a legitimate thing, telling Dr. Cooper to do the research is rather insulting. When you're not even going to bring to bear any outside sources like I could do with a couple minutes of internet research about what Catholic thought was at the time. They want to burn heretics. It even goes on to say, with the advice of our brothers, imitating the mercy of Almighty God who does not wish the death of a sinner, but rather that he be converted and live, and forgetting all the injuries inflicted on us and the apostolic. They're trying to show he's an incorrigible heretic. See, 
we have decided to use all of the compassion we are capable of. It is our hope, so far as in us lies, that he will experience a change of heart by taking the road of mildness we have proposed. They want him to repent, but that's not really getting to the heart of the matter. Return and turn away from his errors. We will receive him kindly, as the prodigal son returning to the embrace of the church. And if he didn't, they would have burned him. I don't think Jordan read this at all. Maybe he skimmed it, but if he actually read this and he walked away thinking, oh, they want to burn heretics, then I would just love to see Jordan's reaction to getting an invite to a game night. Honey, the porters say they want us to come over and play Catan, but I don't know, I think they want to kill us. Well, did they say they want to kill us in the card? No, but they wrote some really charitable and nice stuff, so I imagine they can't possibly mean that. The document literally expresses their intent to imitate the mercy of Almighty God. Why am I doing this video? Uh, let me show you why I'm doing this video. Matt Frad, you are a gifted YouTuber. The Fulton Sheen quote is unstoppable. I'm not a Catholic, but you do pose good arguments. This channel is my favorite. Seriously, I can't think of any other channel that makes such great arguments who are you man your ability to dissect mr cooper's statement dr cooper <laughs> uh jill biden uh statements is plain simple impressive this is the most inspirational graphic on the channel great video as always love that little promo okay hey bro can you make a video blah 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 finally another one Oh, if burning heretics was an infallible teaching and the Pope was involved with Luther, Luther would have been burnt, no question, by Rome. Yeah, if they could get their hands on him. Hey, man, I love that you're responding to Protestant objections with clear and solid arguments. Uh, this is why we exist. We are a small channel, or me, we, royal we, we are a small channel, I, I don't want any money, I might have an old computer, I, I scrounge around for free software, I want you to give your, your money to your local deacons fund in these hard times, but please spread this, if you can, to anyone who is under the sway, who, who, not just of this channel, but of anyone who thinks that, hey, these are great arguments. So that's why I'm doing it. It's not so much because of the How to Be Christian channel is making bad arguments, which they are. It's that you can see there, like, these bad arguments are just like, wow, these are, that's great. I don't understand. Who does not wish the death of a sinner but rather that he be converted and live. Nothing in there that says you should burn heretics. And I think Jordan knows this because he started to walk back his comment, but then he just plowed forward with a whole new false claim. It is the official teaching of the Roman Church under the pontiff, the heir of St. Peter, that heretics should be burned, or they can at least justly be burned alive and die. For the if they can be burned, then that also means it's not against the will of the Spirit, so that would falsify Luther's uh, statement. Not that every single time a heretic should be burned. Their heresy, including Protestants. That is official papal teaching. So now he's saying that the document taught that they can at least justly be burned alive and die for their heresy. Again, the document in question is not making any statement about whether or not a heretic can be justly burned alive and die for their heresy. The document in question is referring to a claim made about the will of the Spirit. The document is not saying that this claim is false, and the document is not saying that this claim is true. It's saying that the claim- It's saying it's false. ...is either heretical, scandalous, false, offensive to pious ears, or seductive of simple minds. And it's against Catholic truth. At no point in this document does it ever say which of these list items fall under each possible charge. But Jordan B. Cooper here has taken it upon himself to assign the charge of false to list number 33, even though he has no facts to back up his claim. Jordan B. Cooper. He, he does have facts. 
because he is actually conversant with church history. Cooper also decided that the sentence, that heretics be burned is against the will of the spirit, can also be read as, heretics should not be burned alive. Man, that is completely accurate. <laughs> if I'm missing something, please leave a comment and let me know why. Don't just hit dislike just to say, oh, you're arguing against my boy. Interact with me. Which presents a slight problem because those are two completely different statements. Completely different statements, no. One's a claim about the will of the spirit, the other is a claim about an unbreakable rule for heretics. Now Jordan's video is over an hour long and he continually adds to this wrongly perceived version of the Catholic Church. The article from Jimmy Akin actually explains why the other claims, and actually this claim that Jordan's making about the papal bull, are false. So check that out, the link is in the description below. I just wanted to highlight this particular claim because I had never- I, I wonder if Jimmy Akin brings up St. Robert Bellamy. Or read this document before? So when I saw Jordan's video, I was like, what the heck is he talking about? And then I read the actual document and I was like, wait, no, really, what the heck is he talking about? Because none of that's in here. Which is actually what I find to be the weirdest thing about Protestants like Mr. Cooper here. They are so confident that their wrongly perceived version of the Catholic Church is correct. Listen to Jordan here. So this, according to what I see as the clear standards of what constitutes papal infallibility according to Vatican I, seems to say that's not just seems it does say okay I'm, I'm being too soft to say it seems to say it does i mean it does it's just what it says he seems pretty sure that he's sharing facts but he never actually brings up the document to show the people that what he's saying is actually in the document that's not dr cooper style he doesn't bring up a bunch of documents he's kind of relaying stuff because he has it in his head because it's not in the document. But you can see this type of behavior with a lot of Protestants. They are so confident. Ferris, I hope you're watching. Stop throwing stones in glass houses. That their wrongly perceived version of the Catholic Church is actually the correct version of the Catholic Church. But they can't show you a single fact that actually proves that claim. It's like watching CNN. Not a single fact. Not a single fact. Not a single fact. Hmm. And then they know what story they want to sell, and they'll just say whatever they want to say about it. They'll claim that this document says this, that document says that, but they never actually show you where the documents say that. And then you go off and look at the documents, and they don't even come close to the story they're trying to sell. Historical context. If you're making a historical claim, you got to do a historical test. Test your claim using background information. Do the work. To sell. To Mr. Cooper though, if you're watching, and to anyone who is teaching against the Church of Christ, you are always welcome in Christ's Church. You will be received kindly. You can come without fear or any misgivings. Because. But if you're an incorrigible heretic in the 1500s, you would have been burned alive. Imitating the mercy. Or, you know, maybe all your stuff would have been taken. Uh, maybe look up what happened in Piedmont or St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, which the Pope made a coin about. You know, any of these, these things ring a bell? See of Almighty God who does not wish the death of a sinner, but rather that he be converted and live, we want to use all the compassion we are capable of. And guess what? Let's see here. Piedmont. Protestant. Told you I used DuckDuckGo. On this date, April 24th, in 1655, Catholic forces under the Duke of Savoy carried out a notorious massacre of the Waldensians in the Piedmont. Does that sound like they thought it was against the will of the spirit? Anyway, just saying. Bonus, nobody wants to burn you. So feel free to see if you have a wrongly perceived version of the Catholic Church, and just maybe you won't hate the actual Catholic Church. One maybe the church of today doesn't match the church of 500 years ago. Maybe the Catholic Church has changed, and not in the development way. Let's just throw it under the rug with Newman. Once you learn what it's teaching. 
And to Jordan specifically, let the porters know you're coming to game night, okay? Catan's fun. If you're going to make these sort of jokes, hey, I'm funny, I'm making jokes, right? Haha, <laughs> I'm funny. You need to make sure your arguments are solid. Ferris, I'm here for you. I know you blocked me on, on, on Twitter. Unblock me. Run these things by me before you shoot the video. I'd be willing to do that. I'd be willing to do that for you. All right. That's it. Anyway, uh, everybody, please uh, donate some money to your local church's uh, deacon's fund or whatever you call what you for uh, giving to the poor. Okay? Uh, these are tough times, and I would really appreciate if uh, you do that on my behalf. If you support the channel, uh, feel free to like and share and comment. God bless.